We all just want to play Fortnite, so it's really annoying when things get in the way of that. One second, mom! And nothing is more annoying than lagging. Whether it's your ping or FPS, it's super frustrating. While lag may seem like an unsolvable problem, there are lots of things you can do to eliminate or lessen its effects. For this super guide, we searched far and wide for info that will actually help, so you won't have to suffer from bad performance any longer. Oh, and for better performance in-game, check out Instapro. Work with the best coaches in the Fortnite community to improve your accuracy, building, and decision making. But okay, back to your PC and console performance. It's unfortunate that Epic hasn't put more resources into optimizing their game, but no worries because we've got the solution. There's going to be four different sections for PC, console, Switch, and mobile, so we'll throw up some timestamps for more straightforward navigation. Without further ado, let's start the video. FPS, or frames per second, is entirely locally dependent. In other words, it doesn't depend on your internet or distance from the servers, so don't worry about that. It's all about what you're running the game on and which settings you have enabled or disabled. This might come as a shock to you, but it's probably not your hardware. Computers always have lots of things running in the background, using up massive amounts of your CPU, GPU, and memory. And they also automatically set your system to value graphic quality over performance. It's almost like they don't want you to win. As Epic has added more and more components to the game, it seems like lag gets worse with every update. Recently, there's been some really bad FPS drops where your frames just randomly plummet. Guess in-game RNG isn't enough? Keep in mind, if you're playing a really crowded endgame with lots of players and building going on, you may still see some lag after applying these changes. Even PC pros with the best possible computers still lag in endgame, so it's just something we'll have to deal with for the time being. Overall, you should see an unmistakable increase in frames per second around the board. I'm sure most people can agree that even 20 more frames endgame makes a massive difference. Don't fall for the FPS improvement apps you see everywhere. None of them really work and they usually just end up installing malware on your PC. On the other hand, all the tips that we're going to show you in this video are from programs that are on your computer right now. Nothing sketchy, so don't worry about messing up your computer. Luckily for you, there are some really easy things you can do to raise your FPS. Okay, so we'll start this off with console. Unfortunately, console doesn't have many graphics settings, so there's not much you can do in game. But first, open your settings in Fortnite and go to the game settings. You should see an option that says 60 FPS. Turn that on. This will ensure that 60 FPS is achieved and lowers settings as much as possible to get there. That one's huge. Obviously, it always helps to cool whatever system you're using, including PC or mobile too. Grab a fan or move somewhere colder if possible, and you'll probably see a minor increase in FPS. Next up, we've got mobile. The most obvious thing you should always do is close all other apps. Certain phones automatically freeze background apps, but some can still run in the background. If you're on iOS, then you can actually turn this off in settings. In settings, go to general, then background app refresh. If it's on, the apps are always automatically refreshing, even when you're using a different app. Location services actually does something similar, so when you're playing, you're going to want to turn those off. The next is pretty obvious, but turn down your settings. Make sure your quality is set to low. This is huge. Fortnite sometimes overestimates how well your phone will run it, which leads to some pretty lousy performance. Also, capping your FPS can be really helpful because otherwise you'll use up necessary resources, leading to worse performance down the line. If you're still having issues, you can turn down your 3D resolution, but you shouldn't bring it below 75%. After that, you should be good. On PC, you'll have many more options that can really change your performance. It's a common misconception that you need insane hardware to run Fortnite, and that's actually far from the truth. So before you go out and drop a grand on a new graphics card, try some of these tips. Just days ago, Epic released a fix for the terrible stutters that PC users have been experiencing. Now, while results are mixed, it's always worth a shot. To make sure this update is applied on your computer, open up the launcher and go into the library. Hit the gear icon for Fortnite and hit verify, and this will make sure everything's up to date. Right away, you should search background apps from the Windows search bar. Turn those off so nothing is running when you're playing Fortnite. Now, if you want to see if it worked, open up Task Manager. Hit More Details and check your CPU usage. If it's capping at 100%, you've got a problem because Fortnite shouldn't be using everything. Now, before you do anything, be careful. Task Manager has some really important processes running. If it has anything to do with the system or you get a warning, don't close it. In fact, just know what it is before you close it. However, close anything that's not important and running in the background. Sometimes your antivirus or some random NVIDIA processes end up taking an absurd amount of CPU. Don't even get me started on the Steam client bootstrapper. You can just right click on it and hit end task. While you're still in task manager, there's one more thing you can do. Hit the tab that says details and find the Fortnite application that is using the most of your CPU or memory and right click on it. Go to set priority and make sure that's on high. 
That way, Windows automatically assigns the most resources to Fortnite. After closing that, you're going to see some major performance improvements for sure. As for your in-game settings, you should turn everything to low except view distance, which lets you see enemies from farther away. And like mobile, you'll want to cap your FPS at whatever refresh rate your monitor is running at. From there, turn on Allow Multi-Threaded Rendering. Depending on your CPU, your performance will vary, so try playing with it on or off. Do you use Discord? If so, try going into your appearance settings and turning off Hardware Acceleration and see if that helps. Turning off your overlay also helps quite a bit, so you'll want to do that too. Once again, search Graphics Settings in Windows Search. Then click Browse and find where you installed Fortnite. It should be in a folder named Epic. Then go to Fortnite, Fortnite Games, Binaries, Win64, and hit the exe file that ends with shipping, nothing else. Hit the Add button and then select options on it and choose High Performance. This makes it so more of your graphics card is used for Fortnite. What we're going to do right now is change your power plan. This will affect how battery is used if you're on a laptop. Open Windows Search and type Run. In that box, type PowerCFG.CPL. On the left navigation section, select Create a Power Plan and hit High Performance. Time to move on to the graphics card, where some significant improvements are still available. This one's only going to apply to you if you're running an NVIDIA GPU, so if you're not, uh, sorry, but we gotta go over this. Right-click on your desktop and click NVIDIA Control Panel. From there, open up the 3D settings and click Adjust Image Settings with Preview. Select Use My Preference Emphasizing and drag the slider all the way over to Performance. Then head into Manage 3D Settings and set your settings like this. For power management, set the maximum performance option. This forces the PC to prioritize your computer rather than the power. Set preferred refresh rate on the highest available. Shader cache as well as all texture filtering and threaded optimization should be on. Turn off triple buffering and vertical sync. This is especially helpful if you've got a good GPU. Lastly, this doesn't matter too much, but make virtual reality pre-rendered frames to one. If Fortnite is loading up slowly or your computer is feeling sluggish, there are some improvements you can make to your drive. Search Defragment in Windows Search and something should pop up that says Defragment and Optimize Drives. Click on that and optimize the drive that Fortnite is installed on. This might take a while. The last thing is just to make sure all your graphics drivers are up to date, which you can do through GeForce Experience or NVIDIA's website. If you're on AMD, you can get them off their website as well. Well, sort of the absolute last resort is to get new hardware. But, and I can't stress this enough, don't buy a new computer. If you're using a desktop, then you shouldn't ever have to buy a new one because you can just keep updating certain components when necessary. To check what you need, figure out what is bottlenecking your performance. Fortnite is really CPU and memory intensive, so see what your CPU and memory usage is looking like while playing Fortnite. If it's above 90%, even after doing all the things we mentioned in this video, it's probably time for an upgrade. If both of them are low, then it might be your GPU. Don't forget to update your graphics drivers and see if that makes a difference too. And as always, a restart always helps raise FPS because it'll close off the other stuff that's been running on your system and apply everything that you've changed previously. As for the Nintendo Switch, Epic hasn't really given you guys many options to improve performance. The only improvement right now seems to be by lowering the resolution that you're playing on a TV. You can do this by going into your settings, into TV output, and making your TV resolution 720p. It won't look as good, but you'll probably see an increase by at least a few frames per second. Alright, so that's it! Hopefully these optimizations will boost your performance. Improvements may vary between systems, so let us know which ones helped you the most. Getting low frames is super annoying, but if you tried everything we mentioned, you should be seeing a pretty drastic increase in frames. Let us know your feedback, we really appreciate your support guys, and we strive to produce quality content for you all. Like always, we'd really appreciate you to drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos. Also, if you want to find me on all social channels, you can at at Daniel Ammerman. Let us know what you guys would like to see from us next in the comments, and we'll see you guys next time.